The first full week of testimony on Friday, the defense finished its cross-examination of uh, former tabloid publisher David Pecker. Tomorrow, banker Gary Farrow uh, will resume his testimony. He's expected to walk through the jury uh, through the paper trail at the center of this trial. Joining me now for more on this is CNN legal analyst and former U.S. Attorney Michael Moore. Uh, Michael, we're, we're waiting to see what the judge uh, does on the gag order. It sort of feels like this has been taking a while. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm glad to be with you. This yeah. is sort of the sausage making of a trial. <laughs> and judges deal with issues at their own speed. They decide when they're going to make a ruling. And, and the real issue on the gag order is that this has sort of been an ongoing problem for Trump. I mean, he just can't keep quiet. So probably about the time the judge decides he may do something or have a remedy in place, uh, then that changes and maybe needs to be increased somewhat because there's been another statement, another comment on a witness and that type of thing in violation of the order. I, I really think you're going to hear from the judge this week about uh, what he will do on the gag order. I think he's going to probably take Trump out and woodshed him a little bit uh, in the back and uh, get on him and, uh, and and impose some kind of fine. I don't think we ought to be expected incarceration. I just don't think that's a likely uh, outcome from this. But I think the judge will, uh, you know, read it the riot act, give him a fine. And then at the same time, I think the judge's memory will be long and he'll be thinking at the end of the mm -hmm. trial, uh, if, in fact, there's a conviction when it comes to sentencing, these are the kinds of things that influence judges as they think about whether or not somebody has accepted any responsibility, whether or not there's you know, been a continued defiance through the process. These are the kind of things that it can impact a judge as they, as they talk about what to do if there's a conviction. And what about this upcoming... Welcome back. And while we wait for a decision on whether Donald Trump violated his gag order in his hush money trial, this Thursday, another critical hearing involving new potential gag order violations by the former president. And joining us now is retired New York State Supreme Court Justice Jill Convisor. She is also, she's known Judge Mershon for 15 years. So, Judge, thank you for coming in. It's been almost a week since that initial gag order violation hearing still no ruling. You know the man, Judge Mershon. What do you think is holding him up in, in giving a ruling on that? Well, I think the defendant's conduct is holding him up. Had there been no additional alleged violations, we probably would have seen a ruling fairly quickly after the hearing last week. But then the new allegations come, and he's going to take his time to make sure uh, he does this right at this point. Hanging over Donald Trump's head are these violations. Uh, it's certainly possible where uh, the judge could decide to find the defendant in contempt and not deal with a penalty until after the trial as well. This is a sideshow. Right. The gag order and the uh, alleged violations take everyone's eye off the ball, which is the trial. And the judge's paramount job here, most important thing, is to make sure both sides get the fair trial that they are entitled to and to make sure that the, uh, everything is conducted within the laws of this state. And the, and the federal government, for that matter. And so he's going to focus on getting through these witnesses first. It's not as though he's sitting around doing nothing else. Lawyers are filing motions every day on different topics. He's got to deal with that. In terms of the gag order, you'll see it. But now that there are additional uh, possible violations, he's going to go through each one. He's going to go through each one carefully and make sure he gets it right. What and would I, you do? What do you think is right? What I think is right is to take your time and get the right answer. I think there's, the allegations are serious. The fact that um, there are so many doesn't change the fact that there is there is a gag order in place, somewhat unusual. We don't have gag orders all the time. They are not meant to generally muzzle someone in a general sense. The defendant has shown he is incapable of following the rules. And so the judge on uh, March 26th and again amended on April 1st issued those gag orders. These rules are not in place for Donald Trump. Right. Right. They are in place for everyone. There's historical significance to these rules. And, and, and the point is to also preserve the, the trial, to make sure there is impartiality, to make sure witnesses aren't intimidated, to make sure the jurors aren't influenced by comments, right? That was the reason this gag order was put in place. I wonder, as an observer and somebody who knows Judge Mershon personally, how do you think he's handled more broadly this trial so far? I think he's done an excellent job. There has been very few fireworks. The only, the only fireworks that you've seen in the case are because 
Donald Trump decides to get on a bully pulpit and say things that are at least arguably outside uh, the gag order. Otherwise, it's timely. Uh, there aren't huge delays. Um, it's going along as smoothly as possible, which, is, which doesn't happen. If there's anything predictable about a criminal trial, it's that it's unpredictable. And here things have gone along quite smoothly. Mm. And I think we deserve, uh, Judge Mershon deserves our, our gratitude in that regard. This is likely the, the biggest case that Judge Mershon has had in his life, right? It is also the first of four criminal cases against Donald Trump. It may be the only one to go to trial before the election. What kind of gravity does that entail for Judge Mershon, the whole nation is watching what happens in his courtroom. Well, I think your question answers itself, which is the whole nation is watching. But when you are on a bench and you are in a courtroom, the defendant is the defendant is the defendant, and the people are the people. The rules are always the same. A giant mess of documents and yeah. witnesses and turn it into something that's gonna actually going to get the result that you want in the litigation. Yeah. And I think that they did a good job of setting that up. And I think that it, this is all leading up to probably Michael Cohen being one of the last witnesses, if not yeah. the very last witness. The very last witness. If I were them, I would close with Cohen. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And I think that's what they're really... Let me very quickly. Do we have time? Can we play this Trump soundbite? Play it real quick. I thought it would be a terrible thing. And there were opportunities, obviously, and good, strong control. Uh, everything was good, but I did not want to. And I thought it would be a terrible thing for our country. They don't care. These people are radical lunatics. They don't care. And they have to be very careful with what this they're case. doing because it comes back to bite. Now, I, I'm not sure, uh, at least if he was talking about this, the, the people in this courtroom, but he's supposed to be under a gag order somewhat. Yes. Uh, he seems like he's violating it every day. I don't know if this thing about not putting Hillary Clinton in jail does it, but do you expect to hear something on this gag order next week? I mean, I do. Soon? I mean, we have a third alleged set of violations. While Mershon, the judge here, has already held a hearing on the first two sets, which together comprise 10 alleged violations. There are now four more. The most recent of them, Joy, I think comes the closest to witness intimidation, if not outright tampering, because he's asked, you know, what do you think of Pecker's testimony so far? And I'm reading to you from the transcript. He says he has been very nice. I mean, he has been, Dave has been very nice, a nice guy. <laughs> In about five minutes or less, David Pecker is going to walk into this room to continue testifying. And the way that the prosecutors characterize this, it sounds really benevolent, right? right. David Pecker's a nice guy. Yeah. He's been my friend for decades. But he says, this is a message to Pecker, not you yes. have been nice, be but nice. be nice. Yeah. It's a message to others. Yeah. But again, you know, this is, we'll see what mob happens. Stuff. It's mob stuff. At least I've got my carrot. I've got my stick. There you and go. In this case, it was the carrot. But yeah. like, it, there's sort of an implied, if you're not very nice. You're not nice. What happens to you? Trist, uh, Tristan Snell, Lisa Rubin, thank you all very much. And coming up. In which Donald Trump and Michael Cohen structured the payments to Stormy Daniels. The allegation is that they falsified business records, both of them together, around those payoffs. And this is the banker who worked with Michael Cohen to help Michael Cohen free up $130,000. He ended up t drawing down on his mortgage in order to pay Stormy <laughs> Daniels. So that's sort of half of the transaction. The other half is Trump then reimbursing Michael Cohen. So this is sort of, I guess, dry banking stuff, but sometimes it's also the most important stuff that you have to make sure a jury really understands. And also, I guess it's just kind of a wait, a wait, waiting game right now still as everyone waits to see when and how and what the judge is going to say about the multiple violations that Donald Trump has made of the gag order. Why do you think the judge it, does it does this seem like it's delayed in hearing from the judge? Like, why? Why do you think the judge hasn't ruled yet? I have given up trying to figure out when and why this judge is going to rule. I thought he was going to rule right away. I thought he should rule right away. Look, Judge Mershon has done a very good job keeping control of his courtroom and keeping things moving efficiently. And this is sort of an inexplicable lapse, I think, by him. To me, there's no reason to hold off. I mean, here's the status quo. We had an initial batch of 11 alleged violations. The judge held a hearing on that early last week. And now we've got a second batch of four more where he's holding a hearing next week. And he hasn't ruled on any of them. And Trump continues to violate the gag order, although he did cool off a bit this weekend. So maybe he's getting tired of it or maybe he doesn't want to have any more of these gag order hearings. But look, it is a fact there's not a lot the judge can do. The judge is not going to lock up Donald Trump, certainly not right now. He can only fine him $1,000 per incident. But like we both have kids. Like if you wait to enforce discipline, 
they're not going to get the point at all. They're going to run rampant. So you have to enforce discipline, even if you have limited tools. I think it has to be swift and it has to be certain. So I don't know what the judge is waiting for. I don't know when we're going to hear. And I think it's a misstep. All right. It's good to see you, Ellie. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kate. All Coming right. up for us. So, folks, what we saw there was old Donnie getting crushed by the reality of the judge, absolutely furious and taking him to the woodshed, you know, in a yelling, screaming manner. And while some people are still concerned about the fact that the judge hasn't gone as quickly with his gag order decisions as we would like, because again, Trump in the meantime has been acting like a maniac, it's important to show restraint so that when you do smack him down, it's that much more meaningful and much more earned. And while some prosecutors are, of course, a little bit iffy, the, the opinion that's the best there is a fellow judge. Because prosecutors are obviously going to lean towards the side of crush, you know, dissent and whatnot. And I, I'm not saying that they're wrong, but I'm saying like they might have a bias much like a defense lawyer might have different biases. The judge here is the only one who's actually run a trial like this. And she is on the side of Merchant for a reason. He's doing a good job and Trump is scared.